As the title states, this video covers basic configuration of the EIS application after the initial install. If you have or will be performing an upgrade, the existing configuration is retained. This video covers the situation where the application and the database are on two different servers. Please review Chapter 2 of the Installation and Upgrade Guide for instructions on configuring the data loader user and for creating the loader directories and corresponding Oracle directory objects. Also before proceeding, you will need to know the following the database name or SID, name and password of the gateway schema, name of the data loader user, i.e. the DLASM user, the password for that user if you're not using passwordless SSH, the full path to the data loader directory on the database server, the name or IP address of the database server, and if you're using passwordless SSH, configure SSH keys first and then know the path to the keys file. To begin configuration, log into the EIS application and go to the Settings Module Settings menu. Then from the Select Module dropdown, select the Processor Management Module. There are four settings to update on this screen. Gateway Database, Gateway Schema Username, Gateway Schema Password, and the SQL Loader application. First, we're going to enter the name of the Gateway Database which is the database where the EIS schemas are installed. In this example, it is named EIS. Now the username, if you took the default installation, will be SOPS underscore gateway. If you've changed the password from the default, enter it there. Otherwise, it will also be SOPS underscore gateway. Now we're going to click on the green check mark to accept the changes, and at this point you will note a message in red text at the top of the screen that informs you that the EIS application has to be restarted in order for the changes to take effect. You can restart the server at this point, but there are some additional settings to configure, so we will wait to do that later. The next setting is the value of the SQL loader application, which is either the full path to the SQL loader executable, if you're running on Windows, or the path and file name of a shell script for Unix that sets up the environment, including the path for the Oracle home directory. In our case, that directory or that script is being stored in the home DLASM uh, directory. Now you'll note when I click the green check mark here that I'm going to get a warning message that tells me the path to that script is not in a safe location. The way to get around that is to enter the path to that script as a value to the smartops.safe.directories parameter, which is in the smartops.properties file, as you see here. So I've entered slash home slash DLASM. I'll save the file, and then I'll stop and restart the application because that properties file is only read upon startup. Now I'm back to the, the module configurations here, and I've restarted, so now I can enter slash home slash DLASM SQL loader dash proxy dot sh. And when I select the green checkbox, you will note that I no longer get the warning message that it is an unsafe location. You see the message that we saw before that we've made a change, and in order for that to be uh, put into effect, we have to restart. But one last module to configure, so we're going to select the remote file manager. Now we want to go to the protocol provider parameters. There's three of these on the screen to govern how data is transferred from the application server to the database server. And we're going to use SSH for each of those. And you'll note that there's three sections to this module settings screen, the import server, the export server, and the gateway server. And the settings in are the same in each. So we're going to start off with the import, import server. And this first default remote directory, this is the path to the data loader directory. According to the guide, it is slash DL O-A-D-E-R. So I've put that in slash home slash DLASM slash data loader. Now the server name is the name or IP address of the database server. You can enter it full name, short name, just has to be resolvable by the application server. In our case, I'm just putting in a dummy server underscore name. The username here is going to be the data loader user. That, according to the guide, is D-L-A-S-M. If you've used a different user, just substitute that here. Enter the password for that user. Now it will be entered as plain text as you type it in the first time, but it will be stored encrypted and show up as a series of asterisks once the configuration is saved.
So those are the parameters that we need to change in the import server, and we will repeat those same steps in the export server. Now in this case, export is the opposite of import, and you'll need a reverse directory. So what we add to the front here is slash home slash delasm. Slash deloader slash reverse is the full path. Server name again entered. DLASM for the username. And then SmartOps is the password. Finally, in the gateway server section, the gateway directory is also in slash home slash delasm slash data loader, or at least it's a good idea to put it there. Again, server underscore name, DLASM for the user, and password is SmartOps. Now, once these settings are done, that's, that's it for this module. Green check mark will be clicked and we'll uh, note the message that we have to stop and restart. We've stopped and restarted the application.